Chapter 3 The Church in Sardis Revelation 3 verse 1 And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God, and the seven stars, I know thy works, that thou hast a name that thou livest, and art dead. The angel of the church in Sardis, this angel is identified as the fifth angel in Revelation 9 verse 1, that sounds his trumpet, and who later pours out a golden vial of the wrath of God in Revelation 15 verses 6 to 8. The seven spirits of God, the seven lamps which stand in the presence of God, Revelation 4 verse 5, and Isaiah 11 verses 1 to 2. The seven stars, these are the seven angels, messengers, of the seven churches of Asia. A church that is alive according to the world, is dead to God. Revelation 1 verse 20. Thy works, the deeds they are doing. These works are religious works, but they only satisfy their flesh. God is not accepting their works, but the world loves them. Thou hast a name that thou livest, and art dead, alive according to the world, but dead to God. Revelation 3 verse 2. Be watchful, and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. Be watchful, and strengthen the things which remain, that are ready to die, they are to be looking for his return. They will need to strengthen the works they were doing, instead of stopping them because of the fear of persecution. I have not found thy works perfect before God, they need to work the works that Christ worked while he ministered to Israel. Sell all that they have, visit the sick, the widow, the orphans, feed the poor. The word perfect here means complete. Revelation 3 verse 3, Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast, and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. How thou hast received and heard, they received this letter by God sending his angel to deliver it to them, his servants. Revelation 1 verse 1. Hold fast, which means to endure unto the end. Hebrews 3 colon 6, 4 14, 10 23, Revelation 2 verse 25 and 3 11. Repent, to change one's mind about something, which causes a change of action. If therefore thou shalt not watch, they were not to forget what they had learned before, and they were to go back to what it was that they had learned and were doing. I will come on thee as a thief, this passage, and the ones surrounding Matthew 24 verse 43 are referring to a rapture to judgment that occurs at the end of the tribulation period. Thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. If they are watching these events, they can know the year, month, and the week, but no one will know the day, nor the hour of his return. This is not the rapture. Matthew 24 verses 36 to 44. Revelation 3 verse 4. Thou hast a few names even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Thou hast a few names even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, their garments, spiritually speaking, are defiled by taking the mark of the beast. They shall walk with me in white. This is speaking about the remnant, a few names, of end-time saints as being undefiled. Daniel 12 verse 10 Many shall be purified, and made white, and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Revelation 6 verse 11 And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them, that they should rest yet for a little season, until their fellow servants also, and their brethren, that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. Revelation 7 verse 9 After this I beheld, and, lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations, and kindreds, and people, and tongues, stood before the throne, and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, and palms in their hands. Revelation 3 verse 5 He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father, and before his angels. He that overcometh, this phrase is used in each of the seven letters to the seven churches in Asia. An overcomer is defined for us in 1 John 5 verses 4 to 5 as someone who believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. Revelation 21 verse 7, He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Clothed in white raiment, white is symbolic of God's righteousness. Daniel 12 verse 10 and Revelation 3 verse 18, I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, Believers in the tribulation period are not sealed by the Holy Spirit and must be overcomers, or else their names will be blotted out of the book of life. Their names are placed there when they believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, but it can be blotted out because they are not under grace as we are today. Today, in the body of Christ, we are sealed unto the day of redemption. Ephesians 4 verse 30 The Holy Spirit did not take up permanent residence in the believer during the Old Testament time period 
neither will he during the tribulation period. The tribulation saint will have to overcome the temptation to take the mark. During the last three and one half years, sin will abound, but grace will much more abound, and God will return signs and wonders to God's spokesman during that age. No one in the dispensation of grace today has to worry about having their name blotted out of the book of life, because this refers to those in the tribulation period. I will confess his name before my father and before his angels, Luke 12 verse 8. Revelation 3 verse 6, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. This statement is made to each of the seven churches. Jesus also said it about John the Baptist in Matthew 11 verse 15, and twice in the parable of the sower in Matthew 13. It is also used of Jesus about what defiles a man in Mark 7 verse 16, and in Luke 14 verses 33 to 35, concerning people forsaking all to be his disciples. The church in Philadelphia Revelation 3 verse 7, and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. The angel of the church in Philadelphia, this angel is also identified as the third angel in Revelation 9 verses 13 to 14, that sounds his trumpet, and that later pours out a golden vial of the wrath of God in Revelation 15 verses 6 to 8. The key of David, this is a reference to opening the door of salvation by believing the gospel of the kingdom. Matthew 24 verse 14, Isaiah 22 verse 22, and the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulder, so, he shall open, and none shall shut, and he shall shut, and none shall open. Revelation 3 verse 8, I know thy works, behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. I know thy works, the deeds that they do. An open door, here Christ is contrasted with the key of David, and an open door. This door would remain open, because of their faithfulness, in not taking the mark of the beast, even under the threat of death. Jesus said that he was the door that Israel must enter through, to be saved, in John 10 verse 9. Revelation 3 verse 9, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews, and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. The synagogue of Satan, God says that those who steal the promises that belong to Israel and apply them to themselves, that he will make them of the synagogue of Satan. Those that will be a part of the synagogue of Satan will come and worship, Christ, before the feet of those that did not bow to Satan's temptation by taking his mark. They will worship next to the real Jews, who are circumcised in their hearts, because they believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Revelation 2 verse 9. I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, they will worship God before their feet, not at their feet. Revelation 3 verse 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. The word of my patience, Revelation 1, 9, 2, 2 3, 13, 10, and 14, 12. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. This speaks of God's protection of these tribulation saints in the wilderness, and it should not be confused with the pre tribulational rapture of the church. The church is the body of Christ, and it will not go through the tribulation period but there will be churches formed during the tribulation period by the 144,000. After the midpoint of the tribulation period, the world will have to receive the mark of the beast to pledge their loyalty to the one world system, and this will be done during the 10 days mentioned in Revelation 2 verse 10. Revelation 3 verse 11, Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Hold fast that which thou hast, endure unto the end. Hebrews 3 colon 6, 414, 1023, Revelation 2 verse 25 and 311. That no man take thy crown, those who hold fast in the tribulation period, will receive a crown of life. Revelation 1 verse 10. This crown can be taken away from someone during that time if they give in to the temptation to take the mark of the beast. Revelation 3 verse 12. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. Him that overcometh, an overcomer is someone who believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God in those last days. 1 John 5 verses 4 to 5. Revelation 21 verse 7. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God 
and he shall be my son, a pillar in the temple of my God, an important worker in the temple during the millennial kingdom. The name of my God, Revelation 14 verse 1. The name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven. Verse 12 and Revelation 21 verse 2. My new name, the word of God, Revelation 2 verse 17 and 19 13. Revelation 3 verse 13, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that hath an ear, this statement is made to the seven churches, and about John the Baptist in Matthew 11 verse 15 and twice in the parable of the sower, Matthew 13. It is also used of Jesus about what defiles a man in Mark 7 verse 16, and in Luke 14 verses 33 to 35, concerning people forsaking all to be his disciples. Everyone has an ear, but all do not listen or understand spiritual things. The Church of the Laodiceans Revelation 3 verses 14 to 16, and unto the angel of the Church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot, I would thou work cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. The angel of the church of the Laodiceans, this angel is identified as the seventh angel in Revelation 10 verse 7 and 11 17 that sounds his trumpet, and that later pours out a golden vial of the wrath of God in Revelation 16 verse 17. Pastors cannot do these things. The Amen, Jesus, as God is the Amen. Amen means the Word of God. Jesus is God, the faithful and true witness. Jesus as a man was the faithful and true witness unto the end. Revelation 19 verse 11 and 22 16. The beginning of the creation of God, Jesus Christ created all things, which makes him God. Mark 10 verse 6 and 13 19. I know thy works, the deeds they are doing. I will spew thee out of my mouth. God will spew the lukewarm church out of his mouth in those days. During the tribulation period churches must be like their Savior, who was a faithful and true witness, or else they will be rejected. Revelation 3 verse 17 Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. There will be churches that just keep right on going after the rapture, because most of their membership was not saved to start with. New believers will join them, and they will be faced with a dilemma to leave it, or to stay in compromise. Revelation 3 verse 18 I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with thy salve, that thou mayest see. Buy of me gold tried in the fire, this speaks of the persecution and adversity found in the tribulation period. Zechariah 13 verses 6 to 9 and 1 Peter 1 verses 1 to 7. Zechariah 13 verses 7 to 9 Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, and against the man that is my fellow, saith the Lord of hosts, smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered, and I will turn mine hand upon the little ones. And it shall come to pass, that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, It is my people, and they shall say, The Lord is my God. White raiment is received by enduring temptations in the time of Jacob's trouble. Daniel 12 verse 10 and Revelation 3 verse 5 Anoint thy eyes with thy salve, that thou mayest see. I salve is another word for medicine. Regular medicine will not give someone spiritual eyes to see the truth of God's word. Jesus asked his disciples when they saw him do miracles why they did not believe his word. They had forgotten his works. Those that see many marvelous works do not connect them to his word, and they will be blind to what is going on. Mark 8 verses 14 to 21. Revelation 3 verse 19 As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous therefore, and repent. Rebuke to tell someone their fault, chasten, to discipline, be zealous therefore, and repent. God loves these tribulation churches, and he warns them to be zealous in their testimony of him at that time, before it is too late. He also shows his love by rebuking, and chastening them, just like a loving parent does a wayward child. Repent, to change one's mind. God repented, by changing his mind. Exodus 32 verse 14 and Numbers 23 19. Revelation 3 verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door, and knock, if any man hear my voice, and open the door, I will come in to him, and will sup with him, and he with me. I stand at the door. Jesus is standing outside the door of this tribulation church wanting to fellowship with its members, but because they will not collectively repent, 
he fellowships with the individuals in it that will. Isaiah 3 verse 13, The Lord standeth up to plead, and standeth to judge the people. Acts 7 verse 56, They better take heed while the Lord is standing up and pleading for Israel, because the next time he stands, it will be to judge the people of Israel. Luke 12 verses 35 to 38, Remember what happened when Stephen's preaching was rejected. God gave him a vision of Jesus standing at the right hand of God in Acts 7 verses 54 to 60 ready to judge Israel in wrath. Revelation 3 verse 21, To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am set down with my Father in his throne. To him that overcometh, an overcomer is someone who believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God in those last days. 1 John 5 verses 4 to 5. Revelation 21 verse 7. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. My throne. The promise to sit with Christ in his throne is given to those individuals who overcome the persecution that comes to them as they are pressured to be a lukewarm church. The overcomers in the tribulation period will rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years who is the King of Kings. Revelation 20 verses 4 to 6. His throne, this is the throne of God the Father. Revelation 3 verse 22. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. This statement is made to each of the seven churches. Jesus also said it about John the Baptist in Matthew 11 verse 15, and twice in the parable of the sower in Matthew 13. It is also used of Jesus about what defiles a man in Mark 7 verse 16, and in Luke 14 verses 33 to 35, concerning people forsaking all to be his disciples. Chapter 4. A door was opened in heaven, Revelation 4 verse 1, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will shew thee things which must be hereafter. A door was opened in heaven. This also happens in Genesis 7 verse 11. Psalm 78 verse 23 and Revelation 19 verse 11, when Christ returns to earth riding on a white horse. Two other times the scriptures say that the temple of God in heaven is open, but not heaven itself. Revelation 11 verse 19 and 15 colon 5. The first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet. John heard an audible voice here, as it were of a trumpet, he did not hear an actual trumpet. In 1 Corinthians 15 verse 52, Paul says that when the rapture occurs, that it will be at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, this is an actual trumpet, not a voice, so these are not the same event. 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 13 to 18, come up hither, the word hither means here. This is not the rapture of the body of Christ as many teach today. In the rapture, God does not call us up to heaven to meet him there as he does with John here. In the rapture, the Lord descends from heaven first, and then he calls us up to meet him in the clouds. Similar, yet quite different. John is already in the Spirit on the Lord's day, which is the day of the Lord, spoken of all, throughout the Old Testament. John talks about events that happen in Revelation 19 with the four and twenty elders. You cannot separate these two chapters from one another. They are talking about the same events. You must study chapter 19 along with this chapter for a better understanding of that future day. This three-word phrase is only used one other time in the scriptures, and it is not used in Paul's epistles to the body of Christ, but to Elijah and Moses in Revelation 11 verse 12. Both times it is used for Jews under Israel's law. But more importantly, the rapture is for the body of Christ, not for Israel. John was an apostle to Israel. He was not a member of the body of Christ. Israel has a date with the 70th week of Daniel. The things which must be hereafter. This is the second reference to the threefold statement made in Revelation 1 verse 19 that outlines the book of the revelation of Jesus Christ. John was caught up to heaven in the spirit, spiritually, to see the things that will happen during the tribulation period while the body of Christ is safe in heaven with the Lord. Revelation 4 verses 2 to 3, And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. I was in the Spirit. This is usually a reference to the Holy Spirit carrying someone to another place. Ezekiel 37 verse 1, Revelation 1 10, 17 colon 3, and 21 10. Like jasper and a sardine stone, 
These three verses correspond with Revelation 19 verses 4 to 5. There was a rainbow round about the throne. A rainbow is formed by reflecting the light around it. The radiance of God's glorious light reflects in a 12-colored rainbow. Here in this verse, we see three of the colors that emanate from God that are like unto jasper, sardine, and emerald stones. In sight like unto an emerald, the rainbow itself looked like an emerald. Revelation 4 verse 4 and round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Four and twenty seats. The word seat is the Greek word thronos, where we get the word thrones from. Four and twenty elders. They are not representatives of the church, which is Christ's body. They could be elders from each of the twelve tribes of Israel. Revelation 4 verses 5 and 10, 5 colon 8. 14, 11, 16, 19, colon 4. They could possibly be two from each tribe that were a part of the 144,000 witnesses serving as representatives for their tribe, or the leaders of the 24 courses of priests that were set up by King David in 1 Chronicles 24. Clothed in white raiment, Daniel 12, verse 10, many shall be purified, and made white, and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand but the wise shall understand. Revelation 3 verses 5 and 18, He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father, and before his angels. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thine eyes with thy salve, that thou mayest see. Revelation 19 verses 7 to 8 The marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. They had on their heads crowns of gold. The four and twenty elders are representatives that are from, or a part of, the Lamb's wife who hath made herself ready, and were given fine linen, clean and white. The Lamb's wife were members of the churches during the tribulation period, who received crowns. The elders received crowns as well, because they are from the same group of end-time believers that make up the Lamb's wife. They are not members of the church, which is Christ's body. Revelation 4 verse 5 And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Lightnings and thunderings and voices. This is one of five times these three things are mentioned together in a verse. The other times are Revelation 8 colon 5, 11, 19, and 16, 18. Exodus 19 verse 16. Seven lamps of fire burning before the throne. They are mentioned in Revelation 1 verse 4 without any clue as to who they are. Until now. They are the seven spirits of God. These are not the seven golden candlesticks in Revelation 1 verse 12. They are also called the seven eyes in Revelation 5 verse 6. Revelation 4 verse 6, And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne, and round about the throne, were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. A sea of glass like unto crystal, this sea of glass is mentioned again in Revelation 15 verses 2 to 4 where those who had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stood singing the song of Moses. The sea looks like crystal, for beasts full of eyes before and behind. These beasts are not the cherubim mentioned in Ezekiel 10. There are four beasts mentioned here, each having only one face, while a cherub is one beast with four faces. Lucifer was the most powerful of them all, but he lost his place as the anointed cherub that covered the throne when sin was found in him. Ezekiel 28 verses 12 to 19. Cherub is singular in Hebrew, while cherubim is plural. The suffix I'm at the end of a Hebrew word always makes it plural. Elohim means that the God who is one is I'm plural, a triune being. The one rule in the biblical Hebrew language is that Hebrew rules never change. Revelation 4 verse 7, And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. These four separate beasts possibly represent the four different views of the Messiah that Israel saw in the four Gospels. The first beast was like a lion. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. The second beast was like a calf, also called the face of a cherub in Ezekiel 10 verse 14. The Gospel of Mark depicts Jesus as a servant. Cows were used to pull plows as beasts of burdens. This sheds a little light on Genesis 3 verse 14, where the serpent was cursed by God above all cattle, a calf. The third beast had a face as a man. The Gospel of Luke depicts Jesus as the Son of Man. The fourth beast was like a flying eagle. 
The Gospel of John depicts Jesus as God above. When comparing the order of Ezekiel 10 verse 14 and Revelation 4 verse 7, the order does not line up because these are the four beasts each with one face each. In Ezekiel 10 verse 14, there is a description of only one beast with four heads. These are most likely the seraphims, mentioned in Isaiah 6 verses 1 to 3. Revelation 4 verse 8 and the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was, and is, and is to come. Six wings about him, there were three pairs of wings, each with a specific purpose. Isaiah 6 verses 1 to 3 In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings, with twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another, and said, Holy, 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 is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. Revelation 4 verses 9 to 11, And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth for ever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne, and worship him that liveth for ever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. The four and twenty elders, each had received crowns for their faithfulness through the tribulation period. Revelation 4 verses 5 and 10, 5 colon 8, 14, 11, 16, and 19 colon 4. Cast their crowns before the throne. Revelation 4 verse 4. Chapter 5. A seven-sealed book. Revelation 5 verse 1. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. In the right hand of him, this phrase is used to denote a position of honor and power given to one for their loyalty. Genesis 48 verse 14. The seven stars, angels, are also said to be held in God's right hand. Revelation 1 verse 20. A book written within and on the backside, this was a scroll that had words written on the backside of the scroll, and in it, sealed with seven seals, the seals are opened one after the other in chapter 6. Each seal was a different seal, which was allowed to be opened only by the one with authority from the author to open that particular seal. In Daniel 12 verse 4, Daniel is told to shut up the words and to seal the book. Isaiah 29 verse 11. Revelation 5 verses 2 to 3, And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book, and to loose the seals thereof. And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. A strong angel, this was most likely Michael, who is worthy to open the book. No one is worthy to open the book because of their sin. Not David, or Daniel, not John the Baptist, not Peter, or Mary was worthy to open the book. No saint today in the dispensation of grace, or any law-abiding Jew of the past, or future could open this book because all are sinners. To loose the seals thereof, the seals are those of a king. 1 Kings 21 verse 8 So she wrote letters in Ahab's name, and sealed them with his seal, and sent the letters unto the elders, and to the nobles that were in his city, dwelling with Naboth. Esther 8 verse 8 Write ye also for the Jews, as it liketh you, in the king's name, and seal it with the king's ring. For the writing, which is written in the king's name, and sealed with the king's ring, may no man reverse. Daniel chapter 12 tells us about a book that is sealed until the time of the end, and also of a strong angel. Daniel 12 verses 1 to 13 And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time, and at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars for ever and ever. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words, and seal the book, even to the time of the end, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Then I Daniel looked, and behold, there stood other two, the one on this side of the bank of the river, and the other on that side of the bank of the river. And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever that it shall be for a time, times, and an half, 
and when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified, and made white, and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that mocketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Blessed is he that waiteth, and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. But go thou thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. Revelation 5 verses 4 to 5 And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book, and to loose the seven seals thereof. The lion of the tribe of Judah, see the prophecy of Jacob to his sons. Genesis 49 verses 8 to 10 Judah, Thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise, thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies, thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's whelp, from the prey, my son, thou art gone up, he stooped down, he couched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. The root of David, the offspring of David. Revelation 22 verse 16. Revelation 5 verse 6. And I beheld, and, lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. The four beasts, Seraphim and Isaiah 6 verses 1 to 3. The elders, the four and twenty elders. A lamb as it had been slain, he was introduced as a lion, but when John turned to see him, he saw a lamb with seven horns and seven eyes. Seven horns, the horns represent the seven world rulers that the lamb defeated by his death on the cross. Seven eyes, these eyes are the seven spirits of God, which are described as the seven lamps, which are before his throne. Revelation 1 verse 4 and 4 colon 5. These lamps are synonymous with the seven candlesticks, which refer to the seven churches, which each had a messenger associated with it. Revelation 1 verse 20. Revelation 5 verses 7 to 8. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down. Before the Lamb, having every one of them harps, and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. The four beasts, seraphim of Isaiah 6 verses 1 to 3. Isaiah 6 verses 1 to 3. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings, with twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another, and said, Holy, 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 is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. The four and twenty elders, Israel represented by their twenty-four elders, the fact that they were redeemed out of every kindred, and tongue, and people, and nation is another key as to who they are. Israel had been dispersed by God into all of the nations, amongst all the different kindreds, tongues, and peoples, and nations. Revelation 4.10.5.14.11.16.19.4 Harps, musical instruments seen with each of the four and twenty elders. David played the harp. 1 Samuel 16 verse 16. He also wrote many prophetic psalms. The prophets also on occasions used harps when prophesying. 1 Samuel 10 verse 5 After that thou shalt come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines, and it shall come to pass, when thou art come thither to the city, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a psaltery, and a tabret, and a pipe, and a harp, before them, and they shall prophesy. First Chronicles 25 verse 3 of Jeduthun, the sons of Jeduthun, Gedaliah, and Ziri, and Jeshea, Hashabiah, and Mattathiah, six, under the hands of their father Jeduthun, who prophesied with a harp, to give thanks, and to praise the Lord. Psalm 49 verse 4, I will incline mine ear to a parable, I will open my dark saying upon the harp, golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Revelation 5 verses 9 to 10, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, and tongue, and people, and nation, 
and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. A new song, the song of the 144,000. Revelation 14 verse 3. For thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood. The spoken of here is believing Israel as they will finally receive the promise made to them back at Mount Sinai in Exodus 19 verses 5 to 6, to make of them an holy nation. Out of every kindred, and tongue, and people, and nation, Israel, God's elect is redeemed out of every kindred, and tongue, and people, and nation wherein they have been dispersed, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, Exodus 19 verses 5 to 6. See also 1 Peter 2 verse 9, which was spoken by Peter, the apostle of the circumcision, to the remnant of believing Jews that believe in Jesus. We shall reign on the earth, it is Israel that is to reign on the earth as kings and priests, while the church is reigning in the heavens. Matthew 5 verse 5, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Ephesians 1 verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Revelation 5 verse 11, And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands. Many angels round about the throne, there were ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands. The word thousands in the Greek is myriads, or myriad, meaning innumerable. Daniel 7 verse 10, A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him, thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him, the judgment was set, and the books were opened. The beasts, the seraphim. Isaiah 6 verses 1 to 3. The elders, there were four and twenty of them. Revelation 4 10, 5 colon 8, 14, 11 16, and 19 colon 4. These verses tell us plainly that it is not the 144,000 witnesses from the tribulation period, by mentioning a number far greater than that. The multitude were the angels. These verses also tell us that Jesus has finally received his kingdom from his Father. Revelation 5 verses 12 to 13, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power, and riches, and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven, and on the earth, and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, heard I saying, Blessing, and honor, and glory, and power, be unto him that sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb, for ever and ever. Power be unto him, the usurped power that resided with Satan as the God of this world, will in this day reside with Jesus Christ forevermore. Revelation 5 verse 14 And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. The four beasts, Seraphim and Isaiah 6 verses 1 to 3. The four and twenty elders, Revelation 4 verses 5 and 10, 5 colon 8, 14, 11, 16, and 19 colon 4.